Hi everybody, my name is Doug Lohman and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. Let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been an avid photographer for over 40 years now and uh, I re here recently I decided to go ahead and start documenting my experience and knowledge uh, in the hopes that uh, someone just getting into photography they'll be able to um, uh, learn lessons that I had to learn a lot quicker and a lot more efficient than I did. This first lesson is on the in-camera light meter. Now, the manual for my Canon 60D, it's 324 pages long. Uh, but as far as I can find, the light meter is only identified in there. Nowhere does it tell us what the light meter does. Now, you may be saying that, hey, the light meter is almost as old as the camera itself. And, but that doesn't make it any more understood. I had a good 10 years into photography before I started to understand what it was telling me. After studying the zone system developed by Ansel Adams and Fred Archer, I started to understand what my light meter was telling me. It was after this I started to use spot meters exclusively, which allowed me to take control of exposure. Granted, exposure was much more important in the film days, but this knowledge, practice on a regular basis, will result in superior exposures overall and a higher likelihood of a successful capture for those once-in-a-lifetime moments. So, with that in mind, let's take an in-depth look at the in-camera light meter. But let's do it in such a way that it's a controlled experiment, one that you can recreate should you so wish. So this is our basic setup. Uh, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, setting up just to white foam board there and we're illuminating it with a couple of uh, tungsten lights that's all throw on a camera and a uh, camera right in front of it and that camera is going to be focused right on you know the brightest spot right there and that's what we're going to be using to conduct our experiment on this and from that we will go and uh, see what we've got Here's our setup now. We got the um, uh, video camera a little bit closer to the uh, camera that's going to capture. Uh, I've got it set up so that we got a live view on it. Uh, let me zoom in a little, little bit closer there. Um, go ahead and hit live view on that. And uh, if we can and we can see that um, uh, our light meter is exactly in the center, just where it tells us to do. So let's go ahead and take a shot of our light meter like that. And it takes a shot. And as you can see there, hmm, on our preview, it's not a very white card. And I know that that's a white card right in front of us. There is the crux of the matter right there. So to expand this experiment out and learn a little bit more about our light meter, um, uh, let's go ahead and go and s switch things up a little bit that you'll see here in just a second. By swapping out the whiteboard with a black one, we can reveal the true nature of the in-camera light meter. Okay, here we are back at our setup again. Um, and we've got the blackboard in front of there now. Uh, let's get that light view back on. There we go. And let's take a look at the light meter by half depression there. And it looks like we're going to have to, uh, let's do that right there. Okay, 1 50th of a second at uh, F13 um, is what we got there. And we've got an exact duplicate and taking a picture and there's our preview and boy that looks an awful lot like the white one now doesn't it huh so okay let's go ahead and take a look at uh, both of these pictures side by side and uh, see what we got okay so here we are we're downloading our pictures into the computer now um, and once we get those up there, we can take a look at them uh, and get to know exactly, uh, get a closer look at what we did in our experiment. Uh, and there is our uh, white card. There's the black card right there. Uh, let's go ahead and switch it back to the white card. 
and switch it back to the black card. And as you can see, they're both about the same level of gray. Now, the camera shutter speed on both these shots was the thing that gave us uh, them being about the same level. When we took the white one, it was at 1 640th of a second. And when we took the picture of the black one, same illumination, uh, but it was 1 50th of a second. So your light meter is telling you to bring in an amount of light. Uh, we had the same illumination on a white card as we did on a black card. Um, but the black card, because it reflects less light, uh, the camera told you, the light meter told you to go ahead and open up the shutter for a longer period of time and therefore uh, give you the same exposure. Now I mentioned earlier that I use spot meters and the reason why I use spot meters, I had my camera set to a spot meter, I don't I no longer have a specific spot meter, um, but the uh, camera spot meter. And so what I do now is I meter on a place that I want that middle value. And by doing that, that's when I start saying, I start looking at my scene and I say, that's what I want in the middle. And that's how I get control of my exposure. I meter on that, go ahead and take my shot based on that meter reading, and everything falls out where I want it to fall out within the parameters of what the sensor can record. And with that, let's take a look at what the sensor can record. So, what I did was, is uh, I took a bunch of overexposures and underexposures of our white card, and uh, it made some for some really incredibly boring video. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the audio out of that and compress that down. Uh, but I really encourage you to do that part of the experiment because what happens is, is uh, you really get to know your sensor. Uh, basically, um, uh, overexposed by three stops, underexposed by three stops, uh, as you can see in the video, uh, what I'm doing. Uh, what you want to do is, is you want to go until the point of you just get a spot of absolute white and you just get a spot of absolute black. Uh, because what happens is, is we've got an inc uh, in my setup, there's an inconsistency in lighting. It's not illuminated uh, linear across it. So the point is to um, uh, go right to where that f first starts to uh, uh, clip, so to speak. That's what's called clipping when you get that absolute white, absolute black. It's important to note that printers um, won't uh, print as far as your computer screen. We'll see. So you'll have something that'll be a very, very dark gray in a print. It'll come out as black. Uh, something that's very, very close to absolute white, um, but it's not absolute white. Uh, and that's going to be uh, come out as uh, as an absolute white when you print it. Uh, prints don't have the dynamic range that our computer screens do. Um, okay, but at any rate, what I, I encourage you to go ahead and do this experiment yourself. That's the whole point behind this because then you get to know this. And to give you an analogy to this, this is my first video that I've ever done. Uh, I, I've learned an incredible amount uh, just in this one simple video. Uh, on, and I hope to use that knowledge to improve my future videos. Uh, but until I really, really want to thank you for watching my video, and until next time, uh, I, I bid you adieu.